we're gonna be looking at Windows 10 Photos Video Editor. So let's get into it. So whenever you actually want to open up the program, you're gonna press this little search icon and you're gonna type in Photos. Basically, it's gonna be right here inside of your app. It should say App Photos. You basically click on that and it's gonna open up this and it's gonna show you what you've recently done and it's gonna show all your images connected to your OneDrive, but I've disabled that. And these are the clips that we're actually gonna to use to edit today. So and up here you basically have your albums, your people and folders, but right next to it is actually the part that we really care about today. So if you go over to the right, there is actually a video editor. So click on that. It'll actually pop up the different videos you have in like separate categories. So like recent ones and different things like that. But for now, we don't have any. So what you can do is create a new video project and it's gonna create a blank video project. But I actually don't wanna do that. So we're gonna go back by doing that. But there is a natural option for it to automatically edit a video for you. All you have to do is left click this three dots to see more and there's actually import backup. So I'm pretty sure this is allowing to import other photos, video um, files. Whenever you save them as that specific file, you can actually import them. But it also says make a video for me. So this is basically them trying to create a video based off of what images you selected, selecting music and everything else for it. So I'm gonna do this and I'm just gonna do select all nine of them because that's the only videos I have. If you actually wanna use some from your own desktop or from a connected device, all you have to do is press this import button and you can select from a folder or from a connected device and follow the steps through that. But now that we have the footage that we actually need, now it's time to actually continue. So let's press this create button and now you're gonna title it. So this is obviously a birdhouse, so I'm gonna call it birdhouse. So birdhouse. I'm gonna press okay on that. Now it's just gonna try to create it and it's automatically gonna play whatever it actually made for you. So this is what it thinks is a good video for it and it looks pretty good. It's synchronized with the music fairly well. So if you see this, it says remix it for me. So this changes the theme content, pacing, and length of the video. So if you do that, you can just press it, and all of a sudden, as you can see, it's changing the music and everything, and now it's like this, which is definitely not exactly what I want, but it is very cool that it's able to do this. It's changing the different clips, it's changing the timing of it, the pacing of it, everything else with it, which is really, really cool. So with that, I'm actually going to put in some earbuds because I can't hear it right now. It also says choose a star, change the content in your video to feature the face you select. So basically it will automatically look through the video clips or images that you actually import and you can select the person that you're most interested in. So like if for instance, this was for a family member or something, you could select that specific family member and then it will automatically make them the main person that they're gonna try to do. And as it says right here, we couldn't find any people. To feature someone as a star of your video, create a new video remix and add photos of people with clearly visible faces. So yeah, that's basically how it works. So with that, you can either press finish video and it's just gonna ask you about basic things like your video output. So you have high, which is 1080p, medium 720 and a low 540. Basically always go 1080 if you can because it's basically the recommended amount right now. Also you have your more options using hardware acceleration. You don't have to understand that, but basically it's allowing you to use your GPU and other resources to do it and you press export. But I actually wanna show you guys the other option next to it was actually edit, but if you press that edit button, it's the same thing as opening it up after the fact. So if we do this, and I actually don't like that one, so I'm gonna switch it, change the content and the style and stuff real quick. Pacing's fairly good. Now you press edit video, and this is actually gonna open it up inside of their video editing program. So right here, you actually have two different selections for the thumbnail previews in the project library, which this one literally just means larger thumbnails that you can see a basic picture of it, and if you hover over it, it will zoom in a tiny bit. Um, either that, or you can go to here, and it's gonna show one, two, three, four, 
five video clips across all the way down versus the other one that only shows two across. So I'm gonna select the five one. You can press add if you wanna add new things from your computer, from your collection, or you can even do from the web, which is really cool. So if you click that, it's just gonna open up like a Bing and like, let's say we wanna actually find a bird. So I'm just gonna search bird and we're gonna search it. And right here we can see all of these different options for a kind of bird that we would want. So I actually think this one looks pretty decent. So we can do that, insert it. And now we basically have this clip. And what you do is you can basically just drag it down into the storyboard. And this is basically all your different clips. There's no multi-track editing or anything advanced like that, but it does go clip by clip basis. If you select on a clip, you can actually change like this one since it's an image, I'm pretty sure you can change the duration of it by pressing duration. And instead of three seconds, let's say we want five seconds, you can click that, or you can even type in your own. So let's say you want 2.5 seconds. Now you got a 2.5 second image. So if you play that through, it goes through, and now you have a 2.5 second there, and you go through that. But you can also click and hold it and just drag it left or right to be able to drop it down anywhere. So let's say we want this to be at the end, we can do that real quick. Um, now let's go back to the beginning and I wanna show you guys some actually neat features. So most of the options inside of this is really down right here. So if you look at the video player, most of the options are right below that. So you have on the video player, you have a go forward a frame, back a frame, you have your play option, you have your basic scrubbing, you also have your full screen and your unfull screen. Um, but you basically have that is your playback options. There's no advanced things like proxies or anything else. So it's very simple for people to use. And next, you can actually do add a title card. Basically, it will add a blank color or whatever. And now that you have that, you can actually press the duration, change that. You can even add text to it real quick. So if you press the add text, you can go through here. These are animated text styles. So let's say the title of it, we just want to call it like hello world. And if you guys know about coding, that's why I did it. <laughs> I don't know why I did that, but um, you see here and you can also just play it back like that to be able to see how it looks. So loved is kind of that specific animated one wherever it goes. We um, adventure is very more like woods, kind of outdoorish. Um, you can also do the layout, which basically means if it's going to be in the center, if it's going to be on the top, bottom, left, right, or in the center with like kind of a border around it all the way around. But I think we're going to just go like that. I think boom kind of looks nice. I think look how simple that looks. So you kind of get that really cool effect. Um, you also can use these to kind of change the length of it. So let's say we want the title to just be in the center. So it's like, oh, it comes in and then comes out. Yeah, but as you can see, it just kind of has that without the beginning and end of it. So you can trim it right there. Once you're done, just press done and it'll add it to your timeline. So how to delete stuff, you basically select this little check mark box to select multiples, you just do that on the other one. But let's say we just want to delete this one, you select that, then you press delete and that's about it. You can also select these three dots and it will remove all. So basically if you had to restart completely, but I'm gonna undo that real quick by doing control Z. And now that we have that, you can actually see um, some of the other options. So we actually have a trim option. So this is basically, if you have a clip, you can take off the beginning and end of it. So for instance, on this one, let's just play that clip through. Um, where's one that I would really want to trim? So like this one, for instance, I feel like I could want to trim it based off of it was showing the ground, but maybe not. Let's see about that last clip, this clip right here. Let's press the trim on that because I do show the actual birdhouse at the end, but it doesn't show that. As you can see, it kind of stops right there. So it doesn't show it all the way. Let's see if we can just extend that out just a tiny bit until we're able to see the birdhouse. So like right about there and we can just do that. And then we can come back, maybe start it around there instead and then just press done. And that's basically all you have to do for trimming. So now instead of that weird kind of way it did it, we now have our own custom 
goes all the way up to see it. And another option we have is actually if we, for instance, wanted to cut this in half, you can press split. And now if you want to take a clip and you want to break it into two, so this would be the same thing as just cutting a clip on a timeline. All you have to do is you can like play through it. Let's say we want to cut it right before it shows that. So we'll drag it to kind of more close to the beginning. Play for a second. Okay, so now we see the bottom. Let's move two or three frames right there. And it's going to have clip one, clip two, and it's going to show you the durations of them. And you can see the colors um, associated with them with the actual clip. So with that, you press done. And now it's going to take that clip and you're going to actually have two of them now. Yeah. So it's those two clips right there. So it's 1.2 seconds, 2.3 seconds. And then we go into the image. So that's a really, really nifty feature, especially if you wanted to do a lot of basic cuts in between or if you need to delete things, you could go in, do the split. It's a little bit annoying because you do have to do playback with it to be able to do it, but at least you do have that option, which I thought you didn't, which is great that you actually do have. So if we go back here, we have the split. Now we have text. So basically on any clip, you can just press text. You have your animated text right here. You can change fine point, let's say pixelated, and we can say um, gamer bird, I don't know. Basically do that, and then you can select your layout. Basically the exact same, and you can select your in and out points right there for it. And you can click and hold the middle of it to drag it left or right. So press done on that. And now that we have that, you're gonna notice that it's gonna have that text pop up right like that. So now that we have that, let's say we want to add some motion to it. So for instance, on this one, it does already have the motion on it. But if you select motion, see it selected zoom in left, but you can actually do none if you don't want any um, motion in it at all. Or you can actually go zoom into the center. So it will now go and actually just do a slight zoom in to the middle of it which I think will actually look quite fine. So let's press done with that. And now that we have that, you've seen the motion. Now let's go into the 3D effects. These are actually really, really cool. This is something that's fairly unique to this program. Blender has actual really, really, really good like 3D stuff, but it is more complicated. This is very simple to use and understandable. So basically you have your recent effects, all effects. You can literally just search through them right here. So let's say um, I'm just looking and we want a glint or a glow, or I think a glowing sun could look good. So let's select that and it's gonna add it right here. It might take a tiny bit. Now that you have that, you can move it around by literally just left clicking and holding it. You can scale it up or down, just the box around it, it looks like, but we can do that. Let's say we want this to be over um, right down, we'll do it up here, just do it up here. Um, you can also change the 3D orientation, so based off of these arrows, that's how you would be turning it, which I don't think this one actually does it that well, because I think it's just the same thing on all sides. So I'm gonna grab a different one then, so we're gonna close that. Um, Let's just try basically like the autumn leaves one, I think. So let's search autumn leaves. So you can select that. Now you have 3D leaves that are kind of falling from the sky, which is really cool. So you have that, press play on it, and you can see that they're just flying down. So it's the same thing with almost all the other ones. You can change the beginning and start just by dragging it, holding left click to change that orientation. I kind of just want it to be over the entire clip so it kind of makes a little bit of sense I guess. Um, and then we can press play on that. And as you can see, you can see they're actually 3D elements kind of flipping and things like that which is really really cool. And you can change the volume too. So let's say we want it to be a little bit lower because it is background noise. You can do that. You can hear it. You can also press the effects um, which is allowing you to search it and this is just going to show you every single effect that they do have in it. Then you have the 3D library, which they have an organization for it and everything, or you can even just search something. So let's just say we have a bird we wanted. We can just search bird and it'll have all of these different 3D models that people have actually made. Let's say we want this Robin, for instance. We can click that and it's gonna start loading it. It's gonna take a little bit because this is a 3D model, 
but it is really, really cool that this is even an option. So you have that. Let's say we want this to just be in the corner. As you can see, the perspective changes based off of the center of the frame, which is the anchor point, I'm pretty sure. So if we do that, and then we do, you can do quick animations, which basically just are like little tiny things. So turntable. So this will just like turn it the entire time instead. But you have that, you can also change the volume on it too, which I don't think we need it that loud. And then also, like I said before, but I wasn't able to show it that well, you can actually change the orientation rotation of the 3D objects. So right here, I can change that left and right. I can also change this up and down. I can also make it turn completely lopsided, just like that. It's kind of funny, <laughs> but that's your rotation one. And you have your Y and X axis also, which is really, really cool, which I'm going to actually set it back to closer to normal. So now that we're done with that, we can just press done. And that's basically it for that. Now that we have that, you can actually see a filters option, which you can click right here. And I'm pretty sure this is basically an effect that it's going to affect the entire thing. So as you can see right now, it's on classical. You can go to original, which is just going to show the plain flat original footage. Or you can go to like adventure and you kind of get this new kind of color to it. So you can see it's a little bit more orange. You can get this peel color. I think energy looked pretty good. And you can basically go with that. You can also make it pixelated. And this kind of looks like a art, not RGB, but like a, a Game Boy or something like that, which is really cool. And you can go to arcade and I'm gonna go to um, energy. I'm not positive. I'm gonna see if this affects every clip. It might not though. So it will go per clip, which is nice. So if you wanted one to be a little bit different color, you can do that real quick. So now we're actually gonna talk about this, which is basically removing black sidebars or anything else. So these are basically for if your footage is a little bit weird or wonky. So let's say if you had like a, maybe like a square video clip, let's say something like that. And basically there's like black bars on the left and right side because of the fact that it doesn't fit the entire frame. This is basically trying to make all the clips fit that frame for the video. And basically it has a shrink to fit, which means it'll just like shrink it down until it fits no matter what. So like if it was a nine, um, let's say a nine by 16, like a phone vertical video, it would shrink the entire thing until it could fit that in, but you'd still have black bars on the side. Meanwhile, if you do remove black bars, it's gonna scale it up till the point that you can't see the top and bottom of it. But um, the black bars on the side won't be there because it's scaled up so much. So that's basically all that that is. You also have here an undo button, delete button, and you also have this, which allows you to just remove everything. So with that, now it's time to actually go above the actual video thing, and we can actually do the undo, redo buttons up here. We also have background music. So if you select this, if you select that, basically you have this small collection of some different songs that they have. So like this one's called Together, and you can just preview them by pressing the little play preview. Um, I kind of like this Together one, maybe. Um, if you press synchronize your video with the music beats, it's automatically going to try to synchronize them and cut them on the beat. Um, you can also change the music's volume. So let's say we want it to be a little bit quieter. You can lower it too. Um, I would say you normally don't want it full blast but since this doesn't have anything else, the music's probably the only thing that matters. So we can press done with that. And now it's gonna change that and it's gonna recut everything. So now if we play, it's gonna look completely different than how it did before, which is really cool. And it does chug a little bit every once in a while and kind of freezes on you but that's just their own performance, I think. It's not like a major issue. And if you were doing this for a family video or something, it could be completely usable, so. But we basically have that and you can see those little 3D elements at the end of it. Then, this is really cool. So if you don't like the music that they have, you can do custom audio, which is really cool. And if you press this add audio file, it'll open up your Windows Explorer and you can just select whatever music you want. So now that you can see that, you can actually change the in and out points of that. So 
Let's extend that out. And now it's over the entire clip and we can actually press preview it to hear it. So it's this song, which is really, really nice, but you can also add more music. This is kind of cool. So if you do that and let's select this one, for instance, now we have these two different ones, but you can change the in and out points of both of them. So let's say we want that one to go about there and we want this one to end a little bit before it. So now we have that. Let's go to the beginning and let's see how that sounds. As you can tell, it also does have the music from the um, song that we selected before, which I'm pretty sure you can change that by going background music. And I'm pretty sure there's just like a none option or something. None, there we go. Select none, press done. Now it's not gonna have that, but we can go into the custom audio. And now you guys can actually hear that it does have just that music called Pathless Traveled, I think, yeah. You can kind of hear that. And it should transition around about here with the other one, so. Mm -hmm. So you can hear that change in between the different songs and they did overlap a little bit, which is completely fine, but you can just adjust it. And it looks like if you look right here, you can barely see it, but if you hover over it, it can show you the other audio one. So if we just want it to line up, drag it to the point that it lines up and you can just press play and it works completely fine. And you can press done with that. And now you have your own music in it, which is really, really cool. So with that, now we're gonna actually look at this. So we have a duplicate project, backup project, your themes. So this is something kind of, kind of cool. So there's classic, which kind of has everything. It's very, very simple. You have no theme, which is just gonna be like nothing at all. It's not gonna add any of the title text or anything like that. If you do adventure, it kind of does this. Wild wow, love adventure. You have chilled, which is just nice for like maybe educational stuff, I guess electric so this would be like if you're doing something crazy so writing the rampids joy which i'm pretty sure is pretty simple kind of like family stuff you have a loved one my newest family member it's it, it's really cool guys and you can basically select all of those let's switch it to adventure just so you guys can see what it's doing so it's changing the theme real quick and now if we play through it the music's changed and see it changed the actual um, text. That's basically about it, but you can also change this. So this is very important. So if you have, let's say a, uh, normally I shoot in like 16 by nine, which is basically horizontal. So it's kind of like that, but you do have a four by three option, which is like an older TV almost, or closer to what like Instagram would allow. Then if you also, noticed you can select make portrait which basically means it's about like a 16 by 9 and it's gonna have everything as kind of like a vertical video so this is going as you can see you have the black bars but if we select that remove black bars it's gonna zoom in enough that you can actually get rid of the black bars but you'd have to do this on I think every single clip have to switch it for every single clip but as you can see if you do that we press play from that. You can see that you can see the entire thing is just in that vertical video instead of the normal 16 by nine, which is really, really cool. So we're gonna change this back to nine by 16. Um, actually, come on, make into the landscape, there we go. So under that, we also have send feedback and settings. So this is basically settings for the entire app. There are a few different things that you might be able to have. Um, you can include many folders in your collections to be able to import things and stuff like that. But that's about it for the settings. There's not really much you can do with that. So we also have up here, we have this little pen tool which allows you to edit the title. So I wanna call this birdhouse. So we'll press okay with that. Now we can press finish video. This is basically almost the exact same as if it makes a video for you at the end whenever you export it. So recommend 1080p and I do have hardware acceleration on. I can export it. 
um, name the file or whatever. I'm gonna put this into that. Yeah, that seems fine with me. Press that and it's gonna start exporting and doing its thing like this. So now, who is this program actually for? I would say this is probably for the families and kind of just like quick videos that people want to make for their own family like vacations or adventures they did or wherever they just want um let me take these out i don't know why i still had them on i think this video program is actually fairly capable for what it has i think there's a lot of cool stuff with the effects slash the 3d element of it with that um, I do think this video editing program is for like family members, people who don't really understand video editing that much, but they do want to make a basic family video for a trip or something they went on with, which is probably why they have the make a video for you option and why even the video editing part of it, there's not that many options with it. It's very, very basic, simple. It kind of reminds me of like a mobile video editing program. I don't think it's advanced enough to be able to do a lot of the stuff I would want to do or a lot of the stuff that people who are trying to do more advanced things so like um, there's no picture and picture option really with that said I hope you guys can see that this is actually a decent alternative to Windows Movie Maker and to be honest compared to iMovie it doesn't stack up crazy well but it does actually stand itself because it is the only thing like automatically on a Windows machine now with Windows 10 that is a video editing program automatically on it so and you guys can see that this actually might be a good option for people with Windows 10 computers and if you guys are looking for family member just quick videos that you guys can quickly make or just let it make itself you guys can probably do that and if you guys want to see other videos like this we have the finding different video editor series that I'm working on which this is probably the first video technically in it um, we also have a video over here that YouTube actually recommends for you with that I hope you guys enjoyed and remember keep on editing